Today, we venture down south to the land of the Saguaro to explore the aptly named National Park, one of three national parks and one of 22 national park units here in Arizona. We'll explore the human history of the park as we hike through the stunning landscape of the Sonoran Desert. From ancient petroglyphs to one of the few mines now sitting in a national park, and other interesting things along the way, it should be a great day exploring in the great outdoors. Our journey begins in southern Arizona near Tucson. Saguaro National Park is actually split between two units, Rincon Mountain District in the east and Tucson Mountain District in the west, which is where we would be focused on today. This western part of the park features stretches of open desert and remnants of volcanic mountains and canyons. Today we would be traversing the King Canyon Gould Mine Loop, a 2.4 mile trail. We picked this trail after attending an interesting ranger program on the human history of the park while checking out the visitor center just a few minutes ago. This trail would feature three unique historical features worth exploring while learning about the backstory of the area. Leaving the parking lot, the trail quickly enters a wash and heads northeast up it. Very quickly, we were immersed in the scenery. This area was part of Saguaro National Monument, which was established in 1933. Early citizens and visitors to this area recognized the need to set aside and preserve a chunk of uninterrupted desert from development and destruction. It wasn't until 1994, after being a national monument and a city recreational park for a while, that Saguaro was eventually promoted to national park status. Today, about 92,000 acres are part of the park in both districts. The trail was mostly well-defined and signed as we continued deeper into King Canyon, up and through the wash. For longtime Arizonans, the saguaro cactus is so commonplace and part of everyday scenery, we tend to forget just how unique and special it can be. The saguaro is so concentrated in this area, along with a variety of other flora and fauna, and it is a fantastic display of how vibrant and resilient the desert really can be. As fascinating as the lush landscape can be, the people that first lived here are just as fascinating. From about 450 to 1450 CE, the Hohokam people lived throughout these stretches of the Sonoran Desert. They left their mark, literally, on the rock walls here in King Canyon. Dozens of petroglyphs remain today, depicting messages and symbols that remain unknown today, showing the importance of this area and the movement of people through it. The Tohono O'odham, or desert people, descendants of the Hohokam, still live in and value this area. Just past the petroglyphs, above the small waterfall on the wash, we came upon the next chapter of history in the area. A small dam, now filled entirely with sediment, is part of the improvements made to this area by the Civilian Conservation Corps, better known as the CCC. The CCC worked extensively in Saguaro National Monument from 1933 to 1942 as part of FDR's New Deal work relief program. The CCC built roads, constructed water control dams, picnic areas, and completed other infrastructure improvements across the country. Working out of a temporary camp nearby, projects in Saguaro National Park still remain today and stand as a testament to the men and women who worked in this area nearly 100 years ago. Not long after the dam, we came across an old building. This was likely built by the CCC to serve as storage, bathrooms, or for some other purpose. The outside was constructed in a rustic, naturalist style. Inside, the road signs in the windows seemed to be doing a decent job at keeping the weather out, and the two rooms remained in fair shape. Not far from the old building, we climbed uphill to a large picnic area. 
This was another example of CCC infrastructure built within the national park. We were the only ones here, and there were plenty of tables to choose from and a nice ramada. The ramada structure features a really unique design feature. The support pillars were concrete that was set inside of saguaro cactus ribs, making the outside appear as the mighty plants that surrounded them, a pretty unique feature that most people walk right past. We took a quick break in the shade and enjoyed a snack and some water. We also talked about the different things we each packed in our hiking day backpacks. And got an important reminder on the way out. Pack it in, pack it out. Always. Don't trash the bag. And this is Megan's reminder to pack it in, pack it out. And take rocks. Obviously. Only if they're hard chip rocks. From the picnic area, we continued along the loop trail. We were now off of King Canyon Trail and on a short connector called Sendero Esperanza Trail. The trail remained rocky as it climbed uphill into the mountains. After reaching a high point, we began to head back downhill as the trail curved back southwest. It didn't take long before orange tailings, signifying the remnants of an old mine came into view, which of course I was very excited about. We continued along, inching closer to the mine, which didn't appear to have a ton of structures left behind, but was still on our route and worth checking out. The shell of an old rock building greeted us as we approached the area. This structure would have served as explosive storage when the mine was active. It was built to keep dangerous materials safe from the elements, and because the building was built to last, it's still here to check out today. The Gould Mine was first worked back in 1906. It was discovered by S.H. Gould after an uptick in prospecting throughout the Tucson Mountains. After establishing the Gould Copper Mining Company and filing 19 claims in the area, Gould worked the property from 1907 to 1912. As was common for many other mining operations, Gould had a tendency to overspeculate and sensationalize his findings. This worked for some time, gaining shares and interests in the mining operation, but when the mine continued to have low production that didn't match the speculation, the jig was up. Primarily a copper and silver producer, the mine featured a 350-foot shaft that is now covered by a metal grate and several underground tunnels. Only about 1,500 tons of copper ore was produced by the operation, earning a total of just $9,000. The company eventually went bankrupt, as the lack of serious ore development outweighed the cost of operation and promotion. Reworked briefly in 1940, it was closed permanently after this, despite an effort in the 1950s to turn the area into a massive open pit operation that was eventually shut down. While not having the same success as other nearby mines throughout the area which is now Saguaro National Park, the Gould Mine remains as a testament to the history of the land. The nearby Copper King Mine shared a similar fate, and while it did produce significantly more ore, over 34,000 tons, the owner of that mine also sold stock and shares in the mine worth $100,000 before skipping town, never to be heard from again. The Copper King and Gould Mine are two of the most notable examples of mining here in the Tucson Mountains west of Tucson. We explored what was left here at this mine, which is primarily a large waste rock pile with some interesting stained rocks, some of which still have a slight trace of copper in them.
Other scraps of metal, trash, wood from the head frame and other buildings are the only traces that really remain today. The view from here was impressive. Looking south, you could just make out the observatory buildings on top of Kitt Peak. Other mountain ranges made up the horizon across the wide open valley floor. It's a little different seeing mining ruins within a national park, since most are often filled in or removed. Fortunately, the Gould Mine was never turned into an open pit, Otherwise, its few remnants would be lost forever, and the pristine backdrop of dense saguaro cacti forests would be very different nowadays. From the Gould Mine, we continued downhill down the trail. We were treated to more pristine stretches of Sonoran Desert. The rest of the Gould Mine Trail, which completed the overall King Canyon Loop, was easygoing with no significant other stops the rest of our way back to the parking lot. Overall, we had spent a couple of hours leisurely completing the hiking trail, which ended up being just under three miles. One of the things we learned during the ranger talk, in addition to the complex history of the area, was how the desert was used by historic peoples and is still used today. Cactus fruits and a variety of other plants are used in local recipes and meals. One of these, the barrel cactus fruit, which is yellow and kind of looks like a miniature pineapple, was one of the edible ones. So we decided to try it out right from the source. The inside was kind of like a kiwi, with a bunch of black seeds that are high in protein and a slightly sweet, fleshy part near the rind. It was decent, but more importantly, incredible to try something that only happens during a very specific time of year. Pretty flavorless. Mm -hmm. We backtracked through the park. Before leaving, we wanted to do one more thing to make the most of our day here in Saguaro. After completing a portion of the scenic Bajada Loop Drive, an unpaved five-mile loop, we stopped at the Valley View Overlook Trail. This short, 0.8-mile hike is an easy, interpretive walk through the desert, more accessible to visitors than some of the other hikes in the park. Informational signs help visitors learn about the different plants and cacti common in this region, and the trail ends at a scenic viewpoint that overlooks the Tucson Mountains behind you and the open valley surrounding the park in front of you. Despite the easy hiking conditions, I had somehow managed to embarrassingly take a small tumble, which I blame on switching my shoes into two-wheel drive mode, and required breaking out the first aid kit, which luckily was included in our hiking backpacks, which we had just talked about a few hours prior. We enjoyed another light snack while taking in the view before heading back for the car. Overall, it had been a great visit to Saguaro National Park that really just barely scratched the surface of what the park offers. In Tucson, we filled up our empty tanks with some pizza and a flight of local beer, which rounded out a great adventure down south. Saguaro National Park and the Sonoran Desert as a whole is really a special place. Whether you've seen it one time or a thousand times, there's always beauty to find in its rugged landscape and something new to learn in its long history. On our hike, we were able to learn about the Hohokam through their petroglyphs, the development of the park and the improvements made by the CCC decades ago, and get a glimpse into the mining of the area that was encapsulated by our visit to the Gould Mine. We love national parks and our special places and offer something for all kinds of visitors. Most importantly, it's a great excuse to get into the outdoors and explore. So that'll be it for this one. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, we'll see you on the next one.